The way that I do the reviews on my YouTube channel is I will most of the time purchase a bike, own it for three, six, 12 months, do a bunch of reviews and then sell it in order to get in another bike for review. Every once in a while I have a bike in my possession that I end up getting rid of and then later on I really miss that bike and the Niner RLT9 RDO is one of those bikes. So for the past year, my gravel bike has been a giant revolt advanced. Really like the bike, I can highly recommend it, but I've been missing the Niner RLT9 RDO that I sold about a year ago. And so now I am the proud new owner of a new Niner RLT9 RDO. So the way that I do my series of reviews, the first one is what I call a first look, and that is before I even get the bike out on the trail or on a gravel road, and that's what we'll be doing in this video. I'm gonna take a good close-up look at the bike. I'll talk about the components, I'll talk about the build, talk about some of the changes that Niner have done with this new frame, which again, really allows you to get a good close-up look, something that you probably would not see on a website. So with that, let's take a look at this bike. First of all, let's talk about this rad color, which Niner calls Baja Blue and Sand. There's also an olive green and orange color, which also looks good, but this was definitely my choice. This color was actually back ordered for a week or so, but it was definitely worth the wait because I absolutely dig the color of this bike. The frame has been redesigned. One of the changes is that there are more mounting points. Niner says there are 26 mounting points for all kind of things like bags and racks and fenders and of course water bottle cages. The main thing that I'll take advantage of is just the water bottle cages. I don't put a lot of bags or anything on the bike. I don't do bike packing yet. It's nice to have that option. So Niner has really made this bike versatile. So this is the RLT9 RDO and the RDO simply means it's carbon. It stands for race day optimized but it really just means that it's a carbon frame and fork. So one of the changes also is the fact that there is more tire clearance. So Niner says you can run 700 by 50C tires. These are 40Cs. And you can also now run 650B wheels if that's your thing. So you can run up to 2.0 width 650B tires. So again, plenty of tire clearance on this bike. Another thing that makes this bike versatile is the fact that you can run DI2 shifting or electronic shifting so you've got the smaller ports for that which of course i have plugged since i am running mechanical shifters so let's talk about the cable routing through the frame so i built this bike up from the ground up so i had to run all the cables through the frame and it's super easy so on the right side you've got your left shifter so your front derailleur cable going in there and on the left side you've got your rear derailleur and your rear brake niner also includes a port for a dropper post. So should you wanna run a dropper post on your gravel bike, you can go in there, stay internal. So again, really clean cable routing. What I did was I ran the cables from the back. So I pushed the rear derailleur cable in from here and you've got this little plate underneath. So it just takes, I think it's a three millimeter Allen screw and you can take off that plate, which makes it really easy to get the cables through. And there are holes up inside there and on Niner's website, you can find what hole goes to what port so it's pretty easy to do likewise on the rear brake i pushed it in from there you got to do a little bit of fishing just to kind of get it around the bottom bracket and then go back into those holes and they go all the way up through the down tube no trying to fish cables through the frame fortunately the days of trying to fish inner wire through a frame i think are behind us at least for mountain and gravel bikes so it's full cable housing all the way through the frame which makes it easy to run the cables and also makes it easy to change the inner wire should you want to do so. I typically do that about every year or so just to make sure the inner wire stays fresh. So again, really easy to do with full housing going all the way through the frame. So I got the 53. I am five feet eight inches or 173 centimeters. So like I said, I've owned one of these bikes in the past. So it's a really good sizing for me. So use that as a reference in case you're interested in one of these. This bike comes with Schwalbe G1 tires, one of my favorite gravel tire. I think 40C tires are about perfect for the kind of roads that I ride. They have plenty of cushion to absorb bumps, but they're not too big and heavy. This bike comes with the Stans Grail S1 wheels. I had mentioned during the review of my Giant Revolt Advance that the gravel bike of all the bikes that I own is the only one that I prefer not to have carbon wheels. So I'm really glad to go back to the stands wheels. I don't need the super precise steering that you get from carbon wheels on a gravel bike. Comfort is the top priority. 
and that's why I prefer alloy wheels. And again, stands are one of my favorites. I did unseat the bead to pour the stands fluid in. I know I could have put it in through the valve stem, but I had a bottle of stands fluid that I just wanted to add. And it was fairly easy to unseat these beads. And so that's, again, stands wheels are just really easy to work on. They hold up really well. So I think this is a really good spec for this bike. I'm really excited about trying the new Shimano GRX components. I think they're gonna feel a lot like the Ultegra that I'm used to. So I've been running Ultegra for about a year on my gravel bike. So when I do my follow-up reviews on this bike, I'll talk about how these components do and how they compare. So you've got the GRX shifters, you've got a GRX rear derailleur, which does have the clutch, which is nice. And then you've got an Ultegra, regular Ultegra front derailleur. And this bike has Shimano GRX hydraulic disc brakes. I've said it before, I prefer Shimano road brakes over SRAM. I don't mind SRAM mountain bike brakes. I, in fact, I, I like them a lot, but I've had issues with the road SRAM brakes where the pads just make contact with the rotors from time to time. So you, speaking of rotors, you've got a 160 front rotor and you've got a 160 rear rotor. And these are center lock, by the way. Makes it easy to get these on and off should you need to do so for packing up the bike. And I really like this rotor. And I will mention that these brakes were pretty easy to bleed. I used the gravity method for the front brake, which is super easy. And I used the syringe on the rear brake. So you know, you gotta bleed them when you put them through the frame, but uh, it was really easy to do with Shimano. And I said it before, I like mineral oil. It's, you know, if you spill it, it's no big deal. Not like the DFT fluid, which can be corrosive. You got a pair of Easton EA90 cranks. This is an alloy crank set. I may put on a power meter on this bike so this is the only component that i may replace i don't know if i can put a stages power meter on this crank set i'll find out a little bit later on not a top priority and you do by the way have a pf30 bottom bracket on this bike in case you're wondering what kind of pedals i prefer in a gravel bike i like shimano spd style now these are made by look these are the look extract pedals which i really like they can use a regular shimano spd cleat but they have a little bit bigger platform been using these for a little over a year. I may even do a review on these. We'll wrap up this first look by looking at the cockpit. So you've got a Niner House brand saddle, which I actually like. One of my favorite saddles uh, next to the WTB Silverado. This is a pretty comfortable saddle on long gravel rides. It's got a Niner carbon seat post. So this seat post has a little bit of flex to it. So it really helps with the compliance and bump absorption. And speaking of bump absorption, that's one thing I really like about the Niner RLT9 RDO, it is a comfortable frame. So not only is it stiff and handles really well, it's also fairly comfortable. I don't know if they've put a little bit more compliance. I'll again report back when I do my follow-up reviews on the bike. So continuing on with the cockpit, you've got a Niner RDO stem, which looks to me it's about 100 millimeters in length. And then you've got Easton bars. So these bars have a pretty good flare to them. I like the flared bars. I really liked the bars that came on the Giant Revolt Advanced. It had a flare, but not quite as dramatic as these. And so I really like this wider flare when I'm in the drops. When I'm on the hoods, it's, it angles your hands in a little bit. It's just something you have to get used to. After you've ridden it for a few rides, you don't really even notice it. Um, I probably prefer a little bit less dramatic flare on the top, but we'll see. You know, it's been a year since I've ridden this bar. Uh, again, it's one of the things I'll report back if I like this bar or if it's hard to get used to. I know this is minor, but I will say I really like the tape that Niner includes. So I finished building up this bike this morning, wrapping the handlebars, and it doesn't have the adhesive, which if you've wrapped the handlebars, that's a little bit of a pain. Uh, this has kind of a gel underneath, which is a little bit tacky, uh, but it does not have the adhesive, again, which is my preference. And another nice touch is I really like this bar plug. So instead of having the ones that you kind of just tap in with a mallet, it's got a little Allen bolt there, and you just tighten that up and puts compression inside. So easier to put on. And then on the left side, I've got my mirror, which I highly recommend putting on any bike that goes on the road. And finally, everybody wants to know the weight of the bike. So I weighed this bike with the pedals before I started putting on my other accessories to be about 21 pounds. So without pedals, it's gonna be, I don't know, around 20.5 pounds. So a pretty respectable weight for a bike that is pretty durable. Niner builds these frames to their mountain bike standards. So not only is it pretty light and stiff and fast, but it's also a very durable frame. 
which is important if you're bike packing, if you're loading it down with a bunch of gear, you want one that's gonna hold up uh, with all that weight on it. So that will wrap up my first look of the new Niner RLT9 RDO. I'll be following this video up with other reviews where I'll talk about the ride quality and even talk about how it's compared to some other gravel bikes that I've ridden. So if you're interested in those, go ahead and subscribe to the channel if you're not already done so and make sure you hit that little bell icon so you're notified when I upload a new video. Thanks for watching.